as you all know Brunel Medical School is a new medical university so that means that there's a lot of things out there that no one really knows about the university even students that are currently enrolled in that university they might not know what I'm about to say so in today's video I'll be talking about the five key things you should know about Brunel Medical School before you apply So the first thing you should know about before applying to Brunel to study medicine, your MMI interviews are very important because if you do well in the MMI interviews, you can be surely set for a scholarship and I talk more about this whole process to get a scholarship at Brunel in my video so please check it out. But first and foremost, you need to ask yourself, what is Brunel looking for in an MMI interview? As a student, what should I practice on? So I'll mention the core things you should know. So the key aspects you should know are commitment to healthcare, ethical reasoning, data interpretation, perspective taking and empathy, resilience and empathy, and team working. So as you can see from the list, at the interview stage at Brunel, it is more fo they are more focused on if you have the right characteristics to be a doctor. The situational judgment aspect of Medify really helped me with this. So I would suggest that if you can afford that or if you have or if you can have access to that i believe it will really help you prepare for the medical interviews at brunel and have in mind this is in 2022 so it might change it will vary because it's a new university and they're learning from each cohort so just check research do your own research at that point in time the first key things you should know about your curriculum at brunel is that you need to know there are different phases so let's start with phase one uh, phase one will contain years one and two and, this, and it will mainly focus on foundations of medicine. Um, in this phase, you will learn basics of medicine like other universities do. What makes Brunel University different is the way you learn these certain subjects. We do what is called team-based learning, TBL for short. This is a more interactive version of learning in a lecture. Uh, we learn in a group of six people and we do this like twice um, weekly. And we also do our anatomy labs every two weeks. I'll talk about TBL learning in more detail later on, so stay tuned for that. In this phase, you, um, you also learn the basic life support techniques. You will be going for placements in your first year and you will be tested on your professionalism, attendance and compliance with administrative procedures. In the, um, in the second year, you will also participate in a student selected component, SSC for short, which is basically a research project which will, which will take about 8 years to complete. So if you're looking to research while studying medicine, you're going to do a lot of that in Brunel because it starts from phase one to like phase three. So yeah, trust. So phase two, phase two contains years two and three, um, which you will focus on integrated clinical practice, which um, the main difference between this phase and the first phase is that you'll be going on more placement rotations. You will, be, you, um, you will do these placements in groups of four at hospitals. Um, when we say hospitals, we mean um, secondary care. So um, the big hospitals like St. George's or big hospitals like that. And um, you go in groups of two uh, for GPs. So when you go to your GP, you go in groups of two. That's the maximum number you, you can take, Bruno can take for a GP. In year three and four, placements would last for around six weeks per specialty. So for every six weeks, you learn a different specialty. So let's say you're doing um, neurology. You, let's say you're doing neurology and mental health. You do that in, in your first six weeks. You and your group of six will do that for like the first six weeks or so. While another, while another group of six will be doing another um, specialty, like say cardiology. They'll be doing cardiology for six weeks straight. So it's going to be like that. So before we go for the six week placement, the whole cohort is going to have one whole week of preparing for their own specialty. That is one whole week of TBL sessions, lectures and things like that, just to prepare you for the outside world because they're not just going to chuck you out there like that and say fight, fight for yourself or find out. So um, you're going to spend, so the six weeks is broken down into five weeks for secondary care, which is working with the NHS in like one of the hospitals and one week for working at a GP. Now it's time for us to go to phase three, which is your year five. In year five, you're going to be focusing on, play, on preparation for clinical practice. In the fifth year, you will undertake placements in specialties like acute medicine, emergency medicine, and critical care. You will also be more independent compared to other years. Your placements will be tracked online on your e-portfolio by a placement manager. So basically, when you go for your placement, you're going to record and write down 
what your experience is online and then it's gonna be tracked and it's gonna you might get assessed on it i'll talk about that later you get you might also get assessed on it and so it, which means that it is very important you will also be preparing for the national medical licensing assessment mla that all medical students in the uk have to take as well in order to qualify to be a medical doctor this will start in 2024 to 2025 so for Brunel students your first the first cohort will be finishing out 2027 so for us luckily we would have had some um, past papers to practice on before we do in order to prepare for our MLA exam the first cohort of Brunel will only have international students so this means that Brunel has a huge focus on equality diversity and inclusion and when we're actually preparing for Brunel to start in September we actually have a form that asks us about the whole ethnicity the whole diversity and inclusion things so to make sure that that's that is embedded into every aspect of learning at Brunel it's going to be in everything so it's going to be in your teaching your curriculum your placements Brunel also try to make sure we know what medicine looks like for minorities basically so for instance um when you have some certain diseases out there or skin diseases out there or it's going to look different for each race that you go to so Brunel is going to go so what they're saying is that they will make sure that every race is taught you learn how it looks like for every other race that's what they're trying to teach and why they are going so big on this is because they did their research and found out that there's a lot of discrimination in medicine so they are doing their bit to fight against the discrimination so the third thing you need to know before you come to Brunel Medical School to study medicine is that you need to know how the assessments are done and Brunel does the assessments slightly different from everybody else um, in the five years that you'll be here you'll be going through what we call programmatic assessments so you might be asking yourself what are programmatic assessments basically they are a mixture of different assessments that are done over a long period of time to give a clear general view of the progress made by a student within a certain time period like let's say an, an academic year so majority of these assessments will be small low risk tests that will be taken frequently this will allow you to get immediate feedback and mentoring one of the main aims of programmatic assessments is to reduce cramming or memorization that most students do before a major exam so you know what students normally do you leave your preparation for your exam to the last minute then overnight you're trying to cram what you've learned for one whole year into your head overnight so what Bruno is doing is that they've done their research and they know that this is what students do so they're trying to prevent this by giving that program programmatic assessment method so that means you learn over a period of time and you recall information better due to active learning active recall and spaced reputation so they've tried to implement all of this uh, and, and like i always say in my revision um in my revision videos active learning and spaced reputation is not everything there's still or there's still obviously other things you need to learn as well or do or other techniques you need to implement as well so yeah watch the video please so within our five years at Brunel Medical School, your medical knowledge, clinical placements, professional development, and SSC is going to be questioned, it's going to be assessed. Your SSCs are your research projects, so they're all going to be tested. For example, if your clinical placement is going to be tested by doing your OSCEs, which is done in basically every medical university in the UK, so it's very common. You also have weekly in-class tests, so these are very um, low-risk tests so don't be afraid there are low risk tests that you do every week um, when you do your tbl sessions i'll talk more about that later on so stay tuned for more so the fourth thing you should know before you come to brunel to study medicine is that you need to know what tbl is tbl team based learning you need to know what that is because and you also need to know what and you also need to know if that works for you tbl is a more interactive version of learning and as the name suggests you'll be learning and having lectures in the group for Brunel, this is a group of six that will be changed annually. So every year, you change your group of six, you meet new people. At Brunel University, you will have TBL sessions in lecture halls twice a week. And before every TBL session, you'll be given a certain piece of reading to be done before you come into the class because a closed book test on it. Yes, this is what I was referring to when I talked about in-class tests. So every week you have your TBL sessions, you're going to have a test. And after you're done with the test, you will receive immediate feedback 
from the teacher alongside an open discussion within the class about the article which you were told to read beforehand so you have an open discussion so that way everybody is learning from each other and everyone is discussing you will also have an open book test um, after reading another article during that same tbl session so within one tbl session you will have like one to two tests it depends it varies on your it varies on what you have to learn that day um in my opinion i believe this is really really good because i'm participating in learning actively so active so i'm participating in active learning which is really good because i know that when i when i enter a lecture hall i'm not fighting off sleep like from i'm not trying to hide my face because i'm trying to sleep because i'm tired and my lecturer is boring and my lecturer is boring me to death no that's not what will happen because i would literally have to be awake and for me yeah i don't take coffee so it's like i have to be awake by sheer willpower and sometimes that willpower isn't you know it's not there so with team-based learning i believe that this will help me specifically really well so um obviously there's a whole lot there's a whole lot more information about this but i'm going i'm trying to summarize it all because of the length of the video so if you have any questions slide in my dms on instagram and just let me know and i'll try my best to help you